tempted to go to that song uh, that they were singing earlier, um, Here I Am to Worship. I, I was almost in tears. Because anybody knows that song, how old it is? Any idea? Here I am to worship. You got it. That song was so popular when Sophia was only a year old. So I'm guessing 19, 20 years old song. Uh, it was blasted in the radio. You know, I think it was uh, Vineyard? Maybe? That's right. Yeah, yeah. I, I met that guy in person. I love, I love music. I love worship, okay? Um, anyway, so I remember I was in, in, you know, in Chattanooga. My daughter, Sophia, was a year old with a little hair, almost looked like Dora. Remember Dora? Dora, Dora, Dora. And she hated it when the people called her Dora, you know, when she started growing. You know, you look like, oh, please don't say that. But anyway, uh, she was, from the very beginning that she was being formed in the womb of the mother, I have prayed for her. We have prayed for her. We have anointed the belly. I will put praise and worship in, the, you know, one of those headsets. Is that how you call it? Headsets. And uh, because I knew, you know, babies, when they're being formed, they hear noise, they recognize noise, they, act, they respond to noise. And I don't want to get into that area of abortion, but it's a horrible thing. It's so horrible that, you know, they're trying to make it a little nice, so to speak, and they change the name baby for fetus. And it's the same word. But anyway, many nights we will pray. I will pray for her. And even when she was born, I will go over there and anoint her with oil. And I will cry and I will ask the Lord. I don't have this gift of singing and worship and the songs. And will you please let her inherit them? Let her cry out and write songs of adoration and worship. And both of them, I pray for them, both of them, to do that. And I start seeing it developing, and that, that answer of prayer came through when I was just, a, just one year old, and she's singing that song, Here I am to work. I don't want to say the word, because that word, worship, she would say the other word. You didn't get that. Here I am to bow down. And just think about it. It spells with S-H. Here I am to and she would sound so funny. We would laugh, you know. And, and, and it just brought some memories to me when she was little. And guess where she is now? She's pursuing the leadership of worship leader. And nobody in the family, nobody in my family sing. I can sing really good, especially when I'm in the shower. And they have this ability to memorize songs like no other since they were little. Remember the song, um, Oh, How He Loves Us by King Walker? They memorize that. I have a video of Sophia and Olivia singing the song. And, um, and even words of prophecy were spoken to me when they were teenagers. Well, not teenagers, still little girls. They said, your two daughters will be a worship leaders. And I, you know, it's such a... Such an inherited inheritance from the Lord, you know, for him to, to hold that and answer those prayers that I have been and we have been crying out. Pray, you know, I remember getting up two or three o'clock in the morning. I would go to the bedrooms and, and I would lay hands on them. So as parents, as a grandparents, it's so important if, you, if the mother or father is not doing that, you as a grandfather, as a grandmother, do it when you have a chance. Anoint those people, anoint those kids, anoint those, those future uh, uh, evangelists, future prophets, future teachers, future pastors, whatever you have. Pray for the desire of your heart. Pray for that. And I'm telling you, God is faithful. He will answer the prayers of your heart.
Go with me to Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 1. Prepare, Josue. Josue told me, be ready to have the scriptures ready. Look, I put little papers everywhere. <laughs> I was smart now this time. And I can, I can call the title of a message, of my message, um, Who Do You Think You Are? Not in a sarcastic way, in a question mark. Who do you think you are? And an affirmation at the very end. Don't miss that word, think. Who do you think you are? Right now, I'm going to be speaking a little bit. I'm going to be the best I can do to stay within the message of how powerful our mindset is. I constantly think about stuff like that. I have developed a... a, a, um, a habit of meditating him almost daily. If I, I mean, there's sometimes I don't do it, but I always try to find a time alone with him, either driving, either in my private room or the bathroom or whatever. I always try to do that. I always try to meditate his word, think about him, talking to him, relating to him, presenting the issues I'm dealing with. Because their mind, your mind, my mind, your mind is a powerful thing that we have inside of us. It develops and, and it transforms you and who you are. Some of the things that you struggle with, that you face for, you face and you struggle, you, and, and you know they're tormented to you, is things that you have uh, uh, experienced as a little girl, as a little boy. Because you did not have a good family growing up. And if you have it, maybe the father or the mother neglected you, you know, bringing presents and Christmas, trying to show you love, trying to express that love because they could not give it to you because that person, that mother, that father was abused when they were children. And they don't know how to express love. They feel uncomfortable to express love. They feel uncomfortable to come and touch you and kiss you and tell you how much I love you. So you better have an attitude of thanksgiving, especially those young ones who have grown into a Christian family. Don't take it for granted. I constantly speak that to my daughters. Remember where you came from. Remember you were born in a Christian family, accommodated with the most high God, accommodated with a compassionate God, loving God. The inheritance that you're going to have will be eternal for, your, for the rest of your life. And sometimes I might be hard to them. Sometimes I might be straight with them. And sometimes I might be a little bit too rough. But over the years, I, I, I try to tune that, that personality that I have, that aggressiveness, especially to my young one, Olivia. We bum heads. But the praise of God, the Lord has been doing so good. He's been placing oil in both of our heads. She's learning. I'm learning. See, your self-conscious mind, according to what I read, God is so good. Let me go into this short rabbit, okay? Yesterday, three days ago, Wednesday, Thursday, I bought this I bought a microwave because the microwave that I have is demon possessed. <laughs> I have to. One night I come from the basement and I'm going up to the kitchen and the microwave is going boo. There's nothing in it. My daughter's asleep. My wife is in bed. What in the world? I open it and literally it was so burnt. It was so uh, hot I couldn't touch it, the inside. So I go to their bedroom, open the door. She sleep. Open the other door. She sleep. I'm going, okay, well, go over there, brush my teeth. Boo. 
I'm going like, I, I got a little bit alert. I'm going like, what's going on here? So I go over there and open it up or trying to turn it off, and I couldn't. So finally, I just disconnected. That demon possessed microwave, I'm going to cast your devils out of here. But anyway, of course, it wasn't that. It's just have issues, you know, defects. You haven't been born again. That's the problem. So, I ended up buying one, all right? I brought it, and I'm going, it's time for you to get out of here. So, I began to work on it. Oh, I thought I was going to work. Long story short. Remember that? Uh, John taught me that one. It's my theme. Don't steal it. Thursday comes, and I'm going like, I'm going to get it. No, Wednesday night. I'm going to work on it. So, of course, we have Thanksgiving, and my daughter, my wife, going to use the stove to cook. I said, you know what? Don't worry about it. Because I actually have to take the stove out in order for me to raise it up. Those who have installed microwaves, you know what I'm talking about. They have two hooks in the back of the microwave. Anyway, so that Thursday, I gave up. I said, no, I'm not going to do it. I got too much, too much stuff going on. The following day, they need to use the stove. Blah, blah, blah. You get it hot. I cannot put anything. So this is before I thought about removing the, the stove. The third time came. The fourth time came. And the fourth time was um, Friday. It was a Friday, Josue, when I called you, I said I installed in a, or yesterday. I don't remember. It was one of those days. It, it's, when you have holidays, it's hard to, to, to follow it. Yes. Yes, he said that. I don't know why we were calling. He called me, or oh, I called him. And he said, yeah, whenever you think it's going to take you a short time, it just takes so much time. So that became like a mountain to me. And you know what? This is what I did, okay? Because in the back of my mind, I, have was over, I was already given up. I was thinking, man, I had to call John. I had to call somebody to help me uh, or maybe Eduardo to help me. And they, I went over there, look at the microwave before I removed the stove, and I said, you would not defeat me. I am serious. I said that. I, I didn't know what I was saying, but I was speaking words into existence, and I said, you will not defeat me. Well, those words were for me. The microwave doesn't talk, you know. I mean, I can convert him, but anyway. So I pulled the stuff. I put everything. I began to remove it. That came to be one, two, three, four hours, almost five hours. This microwave is about 20,000 20, years old, something like that. It had a bracket in the back of it, very, very heavy bracket. And I'm trying to take it off, and I'm going, you're not going to defeat me. I went and got me a long bar, and I began to, you know, pull it from the back. I broke the door. I, I, I got a sledgehammer, and I hit it, and I hit it. Nobody was at the house. I was by myself. And I hit it, and hit it. Finally, long story short, which is being long, I, did, I finally took it off. It had a hook on the top. Apart from the two little hooks, you know what I'm talking about? But it had this big bracket in the, in the back, thick. I took that thing, took it off. You know, I have no door. I grabbed it, went outside the deck, and I went, you did not defeat me. <laughs> and finally, I put the stuff, and everything is lovely. And um, they're, they're, they're match. They work together now. And it's, uh, it's singing and everything, so. And this is a born again because I pray for the microwave. <laughs> yeah. Let, let's go to Jeremiah. Josue, I'm sorry, but I missed this one. I thought I had it here. I'm, I'm in Proverbs. That's a Jeremiah 1, right? Ah, there it is. I got it. Now, I'm, I'm going to read some few verses. Uh, Josue, please keep me on track. I did not check my time. Um, of course, you, you stole 10 minutes of my preaching, so I'm going to take him back from you. This scripture and what I'm going to be speaking to you that I already started illustrating to you is very important. It's absolutely important that you listen to what I'm going to tell you. And I said earlier, the, Lord, the Holy Spirit just brought it back to my memory. 
the, the, the mind, the subconscious mind holds 80, 70 to 80 percent of your memories. Okay? The conscious mind, which is right now, holds only 10 to 50 percent of your memory. Everything that you have done as a little child growing up with parents, grandparents, uncles, whoever raised you, all that memory bank is still there. So whenever you begin to walk the walk of salvation, and that's why the scripture talks so much, especially chapter 1 of Joshua and chapter 119 of Psalms, it speaks so much about meditating, about thinking on these things. Don't let the word depart from you. Meditate in a day and night. How many of us do that? Don't answer me. Because that's what's feeding you. The subconscious mind will, will come in a time that you don't need it. And it will begin to put doubt within your mind. As you face certain circumstances in your life and you find yourself frustrated. I'm going to give you a quick example that I, I, I heard of. This person was just got married. And they were celebrating their marriage. And it was so difficult for them to have that time of intimacy. The moment that came, they came, she couldn't do much because she was raped as a teenager. So the subconscious mind brought the, that garbage in her brain and she was struggling with it. One month goes, goes by, another month goes by, three months goes by, a year goes by. This person is a believer. When she began to realize and tap into the mind of Christ and began to meditate in the scriptures, she was set free from that. I'm not saying names, but we did in steps to freedom in Christ. And many other experiences like that I have come across. So all I can tell you is this. That's why it's so important to meditate, to read, to spend time in the word. Because it's, it's washing that subconscious mind from the past. Only the Lord can heal you in those areas. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 6. Forgive me. Verse 5. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I conceived you. I have appointed you as a prophet to the nations. I, I said, Allah is Lord. Allah. He's, he's, he's expressing and say, wait, wait a minute. Behold, I don't, know, I, don't, I don't even know how to speak because I'm a youth. But the Lord said to, to me, to Jeremiah, do not say that I am a youth. Because everything I send, because everywhere I send you, you should go. And everything I command you, you should speak. Do not be afraid. Of them. So you might not be called to be a prophet. You might not be called an evangelist, a teacher, a pastor. But every single call, listen to me, every call that you have in your life, where you are, you are an instrument of righteousness. Paul said it like this We are an epistle, a letter written by men. People read you. People observe you. As you say you are a Christian and you encounter a situation in your job and you blow the top of your brains because you're so angry, what example of righteousness you're given? A soft answer turns away wrath, anger. And we are all guilty because we dealt with... We, we, we walk in these bodies and this flesh and bones. And we have memories of the past. So that's why it's important that you, 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 you don't leave home. Try to do the best you can to spend even 20, 15, 20 minutes in his presence. And some, you don't have to say, sometimes you don't have to say anything. Just surrender. 
Just present the day to the Lord and say, God, help me to do the best, to be an instrument of righteousness for people to write. Sometimes you don't even have to preach. They see you walk. They see your personality. They see your calmness, your love and tenderness, your kindness. They read you every day, especially unbelievers. Listen to what it says here, because I think it applies to everybody. Who is the author of life? Who is the one that conceived you? I can hear you. Was it your, mom, your, your, your daddy and your mom? No. You can ask a couple. They've been trying and trying and trying. They can, have, they, can be, they can get pregnant. But God is the author of conception. He just said it there, the second verse, the, the second part of Jeremiah. Before I form you. Listen to that word. Before I formed you in the womb. That means he took his time to, 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 to prepare you for the future. To, to put inside of you what you needed for you to be a successful believer in Christ. <laughs> and before you were born, I conceived you. Do you know that everything you do as a believer, are, every single thing that you do, they are being, these things are being written in the book of life. Do you know that we're going to have to give an account to Christ? Not to God, but to Christ, according to Corinthians. Every one of us, we have to give an account to Christ. The world is going to have to give an account to God, the almighty creator. And for them, will be too late. If you don't believe me, read Jeremiah, uh, Revelation chapter 21. Another title of my message could be, What Holds You Back to Be Who You Are? Question that to yourself. What holds me, Joel Canamar, holds me back to become who I want to be in Christ? What holds you to become what God calls you to be? I'm telling you, the mind is so powerful. And I'm just talking about you and me. We're not talking about devils. We're not talking about strongholds. Strongholds is another case. Everything, all the odds are against us. But who is inside of us? Mighty than the one who is in the world. Who is inside of us mighty the one, than the one who is in the world? Just, as, just the world itself, without putting Satan in the equa equation, is that how you say it? We will have difficulties. Jesus said it. In this world, you will have tribulations. As a matter of fact, and you know this, those who are being with Christ for a while... Every time you set your mind to become even more, if I can call it like that, more pure, more holy, more, more uh, devoted to Christ, you will face consequences. Either through the, your loved ones or people at work to stop you from the victory that you already have. It's inevitable. The stumbling blocks will come. Not going to come. Will come. Where are we? Let's go, to, let's go to Colossians. Colossians chapter 2. And real briefly, I'm going to read it because I want you to see in the word. Hopefully some of you guys brought the word. If you don't, open your phone 
and read it. I know they put it over there, but. Let's start from verse 9. Chapter 2, verse 9. And for in him all the fullness, all the fullness of deity dwells in a bodily form. And in him you have been made complete. Let me read it again. And in him you have been made complete. And he is the head over all rule and authority. Let us think in, especially verse 5, uh, 10. In him you have been made complete. Complete. If you don't understand, Joe, uh, uh, I don't, I still, no buts, no excuses. You are complete in Christ. Let's, let's stop there for a minute. I'm going to make a statement. Have you ever noticed? I, 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 I'm a, I'm a, I am an observer. I watch people. Since I, was, since I was a little kid, I always been like that. Not just people, but places. I have a photographic memory of places. I might not, I might not tell you the address of that particular place that I am. But I can tell you what building, what color is it, what is across the street, the lady that's selling something in the street. I, I just pick up details. That's how my brain works. It's, it's so beautiful. But have you noticed sometimes, especially in the countenance of an individual, you know they're thinking something. You could be like this. You could be, it's just not you. How do you think depression comes? How do you think oppression comes? How do you think sadness comes? Because you dwell and you're thinking and stuff you should not be thinking. Hear me good. Let me tell you again. Depression and oppression comes because the individual, I'm, I'm not against Chemistry unbalance of the brain. I understand that. I, but right now, for the sake of what we're speaking to you right now, what I'm talking to you, is whatever you meditate, whatever you think of, and I'm going to show you a scripture in Proverbs. That's who you become. A person who is depressed, who is oppressed, who is sad, who is even sick, is because they're thinking and stuff they should not be thinking. When fear comes and many different forms that come to your mind and they speak to your thought and it manifests into your body, I'm telling you, the mind is powerful. This, you know, great thing that we had inside of us is as ugly as you can be when you see it in, the, in real life. It's not pretty. Looks like scramble eggs. But it's beautiful. It is more, it's more complex than any other computer that man can ever create it. We have, listen to me, we have the power to create. Not us. Our brain through Christ, through his word. That's where miracles come from. God doesn't come and just lay hands and heal somebody. It is you. You are the instrument. Because you believe a truth. <laughs> this morning, we were getting ready, and I look at my wife, and I'm going like, honey, what are you thinking? Her eyes went like, what? I said, I know you. You're thinking. Chill. How do you know that? I said, we've been married for 20 years. Because she was, she was struggling because she's shorthanded in the back. She's working with the children. 
And I said, honey, it's going to work out. Just chill. It's, it's, it's fine. So it is important what you think. I'm telling you. I, I'm, not, I, I, I'm not out of the woods myself. I still struggle with thoughts. But I'm learning how to face this thing that comes every now and then. In him, we have been made complete. Let me finish reading. One day I was studying this and I was circling every, thing, every word, every time the word says in him, in him, in him. Just in chapter 2 appears three or four times. Verse 11. And in him you were also circumcised with a circumcision made without hands and the removal of the body of the flesh. By the circumcision of Christ. It is a lot of meat right there. But if you really think about it, it's, um, it, it's amazing what God is doing. It's not talking about the circumcision of your flesh. It's talking about the, the circumcision of the way you think, the way you are. Is this too much for you? Uh, I'm, I'm okay. You, you guys getting it? Or I'm... I'm, I'm off the charge. I'm okay? Okay. Because my brain is beautiful. I don't care anybody says the opposite. I reject that. But anyway, it goes even farther. And I'm going to jump. I know it's not in the notes. But I want you to go to verse 14. Having, it says, having canceled all the decrees, all the uh, certificates of debt, consider consistent on decrees against you. You see, there are decrees against you. Listen to me. There are decrees against you, and the devils know about it. And they know how to bring those decrees against you. They speak to you. They, 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 they spark thoughts within your brain. When you sleep, when you are awake, when you're with somebody. And it says, consider the decrees against us in which we were hostile to us, to, to us. It was hostile towards us. And he has taken it out of the way. How did, he, how did Jesus took it out of the way? By what? It's not up there. That's all right. By nailing on the cross. Let me read it again. Having concealed out of the certificate of debt cons consistent of decrees against us in which we were hostile to, uh, towards, to us. And he has taken it out of the way, having, it, having nailed it, nailed, E.D., and the cross. Verse 15. I have meditated in that verse many, many, many times. And it will help you meditate whenever you struggle with something. Because the devil hates this. The evil spirits hate this verse, especially when you, when you wrap it up in your brain, in your mind, and in, in the way you think. Proverbs chapter 3, just meditate in it. They don't like that, and they will fight you for it. But the moment you meditate, it becomes a life in you. It goes from here to your spirit. Verse 15, when he has disarmed, Say it with me. He has disarmed. Hmm. Another, another word for disarm, disarm is he rents, he removed their clothes of those spirits. They're naked, they're exposed. Don't you like the word? When he has disarmed the rulers and authorities, he made a public display of them. Having triumphed over them through him and the cross. He made a public display of them in the cross. And I'm telling you, the enemy knows how to steal that that belongs to you. He did everything already in the cross. And in him you have been made complete. There's nothing you can add to it. 
It is like this. It's like a, a seed in the ground that had not been developed. And even if he broke the soil and is developing and is growing, it's still immature. It's still a baby. But you're complete. You are an apple tree. You are a pecan tree. It's already there. The DNA is there. Whenever it grows, it will feed many. Whenever it develops, whenever it begins to produce fruit, it will be to feed other people. I'm speaking in a, in a, in a form of a parable. What is growing in you that you can feed people? What fruit do you have that can minister to people? I mean, if you don't have any, just love them. Just be patient with them. Just embrace them. Speak kind words. Encourage them. It doesn't matter how rascals they are. Encourage them. Ask the Holy Spirit to teach you, to give you words, you know, positive words that you can lift, uplift somebody. And the door will open when you can really minister to them and say, you, you know, you're full of devils, but I'm going to help you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You, don't, you won't say that. But when God opens the door for you to do that, then you can minister to them. But you just met them or somebody come across, you know, be gentle to them. Be patient to them. Yeah. There's some people over there that I come across. I, I don't have a lot of patience. But God does. And he can develop that in me and in you. I still have another hour, or are we okay? I'm going to be, this is, uh, I'll, I'll wrap it up in a few seconds. I'm going to be like Josue. That's what, the favorite word of Josue. I'm, I'm laying in the plane already. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Uh, <clears throat> Right there, since then you are in that chapter, go to next, I mean, up that page. Go to chapter 3 of Colossians. If then, it says, if then you have been raised up. Raised up. E.D. Look at that word. Raised. E.D. Up. With Christ. What is he saying right there, Paul? Paul is saying, seeking. What is seeking? What is seeking? I, I, I can hear you. You're not cooperating with me. Uh, I'm, I'm running out of patience. I'm kidding. What is seeking? Anybody? Looking for? What else? Okay, let me give you an example. Seeking is ing. That's what I'm trying to get. Is is a verb that doesn't stop. You don't stop seeking when you come to the Lord. You don't stop seeking when you're born again. You don't stop seeking when He doesn't give you an answer. You don't stop seeking when God doesn't answer. He remains silent. You keep going after. The Bible says, by the mouth of Jesus, keep on singing. Keep on seeking. Keep on asking. The original Greek says, keep on asking. Keep on knocking. He gave us many parables. Like the people who brought, the guy who brought his friends in the middle of the night at midnight. He did not quick knocking. He disturbed the almighty God and said, I got friends that they need to be attent. They're hungry. They're tired. Move, move out of the way. Go to bed. I'm in bed already. I'm asleep. But he did not quit. Seeking. I-N-G. Tenacity. Go after it. What do you think that God doesn't speak any uh, in the book of Romans about the armament, the, the, the whole armor of God? What do you think he, he doesn't talk about anything in the back? Because you have never, you never quit. You never turn yourself around for the enemy to stab you in the back. Never. You go after it with all you have. 
And after you have done it, Paul says, stand. A military statement of a soldier. Stand. Don't give up. You can do it. God calls you before the foundations of the world. There's a reason why he calls you because he has given you already the ability for you to, be, to live in victory, to move in victory, to establish victory in your life. You have dreams in within your heart. Now I'm really preaching. You have dreams inside of your heart and your spirit that you have not come to bring it into fruition because of your doubt and unbelief. You cut yourself short of the blessings of God because of the way you think, because of my past. You don't understand, Joe, but I, I didn't know how to read when I was a, a, little, a little child, a teenager. I'm telling you, I had to overcome that. I never forgot about it. There's still, there's a memory, and sometimes I struggle with it. But I made a decision. I will not stay in my self-conscious memories anymore. When it was in elementary, this teacher put me to the front. She had some way weird things of teaching. She would tell the kids to put a pencil within their mouth and try to read a chapter of a book. I don't understand that. What, you want us to speak in tongues before I've been born again? <laughs> I always wonder about that. And this happened like many, many years. I didn't learn how to read because I was stupid. I did not learn how to read because no one took me underneath their wing and they were patient to teach me what was going on with me. I was switching numbers. I was switching letters. I didn't know that that like, dyslexia, whatever it's called, it sounds like an, a foreign language, it sixes that it was there. It was manifesting in my life because it manifested in Sophia, in Olivia, I'm sorry. I didn't know that. If somebody would be professional and tell me the reason why you struggle in reading is because you switch letters, you switch numbers. So this lady put me in front of this teacher. I still remember her. We used to call her horse face. Because she had big eyes like this. We have a man that give titles or put names in every teacher. Oh man, anyway, it's a rabbit trail. Forgive me. So the horse teacher, I mean, the teacher comes to the front and calls me. He said, Joel, I need you to read this chapter. I'm telling you, I was almost my pants. I was so nervous. I was so nervous because I didn't know how to read. I don't even know what's going to tell you about this. But you need to hear it. I'm at front with a bunch of students. And I couldn't read. I didn't have the pencil this time. He, she shared a different technique. Thank God. Can you imagine not even being able to read and with a pencil in my mouth? What the heck is you talking about? I'm sorry. I'm not a horse. With my brittle, you know. So I'm over there trying to read. I got so nervous. And because that incident, in my early years of developing, he affected me for the rest, the rest of my life till I became a Christian. And I learned that this lady cursed me back then. Even back then, she spoke words to curse me. What can men, what can this man do? He don't even know how to read. You don't do that in front of students, you fool. I wanted to call her that. She deserved to be called horse. No, I'm sorry. Forgive me. Horse face. Amen. I'm praying. I, actually, as a matter of fact, I pray for her salvation. But it might not be reading, guys. It might be anything else. Maybe you cannot relate to intimacy. And I'm not talking about that act of bed in the bed. I'm talking about intimacy to be a friend, to be close to one person, to another person. Because you have been wounded many times. You have been hurt many times in relationships that you stay oppressed and you close yourself. You say, I don't want to deal with relationship because every time I get close to somebody, I get hurt. And they, and they just speak about me and they say, and I just I can't do that. I cannot open up myself to intimacy. I know why. Because you're in the past. Face your fears. 
overcome your fears. They have said something about this man over here, this city, and I'm not going to mention names, that he will not accomplish to anything because of the issue that he struggled with. And he is working. He has his own house. He functions right. And the family is happy because they have prayed for him. There is an individual that gave me the permission to share this testimony. I don't know all the details. But when she was little, when she, she was about to celebrate her birthday, Something evil happened. Something happened that disturbed that day of her birthday. The, the specific day that God selected for her to be born in this earth. Because of that, because what they spoke to her affected her personality. Affected her every time that day of that birthday, that special day will come. Either she end up getting sick. She has a headache. Something will always happen. Why? Because with your subconscious mind, you are triggering something in your mind to become, to happen. And it happened. Job said, the very thing I fear came upon me. Why that that came upon him? Because Job was meditating something he should never be meditating on. You have something to complain? Read the book of Job to see if you can complain about what he went through. So one day she calls recently, this individual, this person, and asked to talk to Soraya. I was awake, and I was laying in bed just thinking what I was going to be preaching about. And it's almost, don't ask me how, it's almost I knew what she was going to be talking to Soraya. I knew it. And the very scriptures I've already been meditating, like Job, the, the, I couldn't find that scripture. You know, like Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7. We will go there in a minute if I have time. What, 10 more minutes? Is that good? Or five? So Soraya, wonderful as she is, she just listened. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm, I'm learning about that. I'm, I need to be more of a listener instead of running my mouth, trying to give an advice right away. I'm learning. A wise man keeps his mouth shut. So she's speaking, talking, and saying, you know, um, I couldn't make it to a Thanksgiving because I end up going to the hospital because of this and this. And this person had a pain here. All of a sudden, Soraya starts speaking, and, and she said, you know, actually, she did. She, she saw the situation. The moment they prayed together, the moment, the moment she confessed that, that, that brought the remedy of what's going on. And she was healed. Like two hours later, the pain disappeared. She went to the hospital. They couldn't find nothing. Why? Because the mind has a powerful thing within you to make you feel things that you don't even know you're feeling it. But you're listening to your own body. What would have happened to Abraham? Let me ask you a question. What would have happened to Abraham or his wife if they would have meditate on how old they were? Think about it. I don't know what would have happened to the descendants of Abraham. But no, Abraham did not stay there. He did not park in that area. He went forward. And he believed. And the man and the, and the God who creates things out of nothing. So finally, we, I think sorry, I called her like a couple hours later. She goes, I have no pain. I have nothing going on in my body. I feel great. And just it took a little bit of the sermon and understanding that all this time, as Job did the same thing, she was cursing the day that she was born. And God says, do not curse anything 
that I have blessed. This is This is a message that is not very easy to swallow. Because I'm I, I just going to say this. Please hear me and, and, and don't be condemned. There are, there are thoughts within your mind, reason stuff that you, you meditate, you think about, that have making you sick. And I tell you, I tell you why I know. Because when you go to the doctor, they cannot give you an answer. I'm not saying all the stuff comes from that. But the majority of our sickness comes because of the way we think. Because of the way we process our thoughts. And one of the bigger giants is fear. Fear will trigger something in your brain and your body that will manifest with sickness. Why do you think many people die during COVID? Because of the garbage the news was spreading out. Full of fear. And I feel, I feel bad for you guys that spend time and time and day after day watching the news. Put some worship. Put YouTube there. Maverick music of, you know, upper room. And let it blast in your house and meditate in that. I'm not against news. It's good to get some news, but then don't stay every day over there turning the channel on and watching news. A lot of the stuff they, they, they preach to you is, is lies. Let me wrap it up so I can bring this helicopter down. I think I pretty much said everything. Let me say this one. I, I don't have it in my... In, and he doesn't have it in the computer, but I'm going to read it to you. It's in First, Second Corinthians. This, this scripture really opened my understanding of what Paul is talking about. Uh, Second Corinthians chapter, um, what is it, 13. Chapter 13. And I, I'll finish with this. Verse 4 and 5, especially 5. I mean, let, let's just go to 5. Test yourselves to see if you are in the faith Examine yourselves. Test yourselves to see if you are in the faith. Examine yourselves. Or do you not recognize this about yourselves? That Jesus Christ is in you. Unless indeed you fail to the test. Let me repeat it again. He says, or, or do you not recognize that these about yourselves? That Jesus Christ is you in you unless in, indeed you fail, to, you fail the test. The test he's talking about, test yourself, is what are you dwelling in? What are you thinking? You don't recognize the call in your life? You know... Isaiah 55, which I have it, but I'm going to just briefly talk about it. I always had a, I never could understand that chapter. Whenever you get a chance, read it. Because it's talking about how your thoughts are not my thoughts. All right? And your ways are not my ways. But you go up in the beginning of the chapter, and is rebuking this wicked person. And when the Bible talks about the wicked He's not talking about people in the world. He's talking about a believer. Read it in Psalms 51. It describes to you what a wicked person is. It's a person who knows the testimony of God and the truth of God and he casts it behind their back. They don't care about it. You have three people in the world. You have the sinner, the wicked, and the believer. Nothing else. This is the one that's in between. They're wishy-washy. That's the one that Jesus spit them out of their mouth because they were in him. And he had to get rid of them because of their unbelief. So Isaiah goes on and reads, for your thoughts are not my thoughts and your ways are not my ways. And I'm thinking, wait a minute, Lord. The scripture says in Corinthians that we have the man of Christ. We're not going to have it. We have it. Why are you saying that then? Because the thoughts of the wicked were not in line with the thoughts of God. 
When you begin to think his thoughts, you are in alignment with him. And then you find favor, everything you do. You, have, you find understanding in the back of your mind or in the front or whatever you think of in the side. I don't know where the thoughts manifest, but it will, it will speak to you wisdom. It will tell you how to do certain things. The problem is sometimes we don't acknowledge God when you're doing something. Even a simple thing, how to cook or how to work in a car. You ask the Holy Spirit, it will teach you. I'm telling you, he will tell you, don't do this, Joe. do it like this. I have done stuff like that and I avoid an accident because the Holy Spirit warned me and I listened to it. Not all the time because I've been stored in the past. So whenever your thoughts, your thoughts, your way of thinking. <laughs> Jesus. As a man thinks within his what? Finish it. As a man thinks within what? But you know the original, the original Greek, the original Hebrew is not heart. The original Hebrew is the word soul. As a man thinks within his soul. Basically the Hebrew talks about you open the door to stuff that you should be either thinking or not thinking. If it's good or bad. And that is in Proverbs, I think it's chapter 23, verse 7. Little, little tiny verse. Sometimes are the best verses right there. Like the one in Matthew, and Jesus wept. You ever heard that little verse? So, Father, I thank you. I thank you for, for your presence. I thank you for what you're speaking. Hopefully, I gave my message across so that people were able to embrace it. So, Father, I thank you because you're so good. Even when I was a child, even when I was growing up and I was faced with that. But I faced my fears by confessing it to you for you to heal my way of thinking. And you are so good. You're so wonderful. So I don't want... I don't want anybody to go here without acknowledge that you are born again. Is anyone here who has not come to the intimate, intimate relationship with Christ, so-called born again? Is anybody, anyone over here that doesn't know the Lord? Anybody? Thank you, Jesus. just want you to do me a favor I'm wrapping it up but I want you to just close your eyes let the Holy Spirit minister to you that whatever I said whatever I spoke that the enemy will not twist it in your brain and condemn you and accuse you because of the way you've been dwelling I have said this before and I will repeat it again as a Christian, as a believer who has the covenant of Christ, you do not walk with your feet. You walk with your mind. The lifestyle of a believer is walking with your way of thinking. And Enoch walked with God. And Moses walked with God. David walked with God. So just close your eyes for a moment. Just give me just three minutes so we can wrap it up so we can go do it, baptisms. Holy Spirit, minister to your people. Enlight their way of thinking to be thoughts of righteousness and holiness and purity. Holy Spirit, touch him.
speak to them. Speak to all of us. Be intimate with us. We do not leave you in the closet. We left home with you. We walk on away with you. We dress with you. We are one with you. You are a jealous God that desires intimacy and the innermost. <laughs>